today, God, and we bless your name today. Come on, clap your hands one more time and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I can't hear you. opportunity to gather and give the Lord praise. We don't, we don't have anybody ready to shoot us or gun us down or put us in jail because we praise the name of Jesus. Somebody just say that wonderful name. Jesus. Amen. In, in the church some places still today they say come on and bless that wonderful name of Jesus because there's no other name that I know. I know we don't sing that no more, but those are still some great praise and worship songs. As you are being seated on tonight, if you have a cell phone, a smartphone, a dumb phone, I want you to take your phone out and go to Periscope and invite some people to join the broadcast tonight and tune in so that they can be blessed. We're going to continue teaching tonight on breaking the matrix. You can have what you pray. We started this message on Sunday, and all this month we're going to be preaching about breaking the matrix. On Sunday, I'm going to bring a copy or copies of a diagnosis that I received uh, saying that there was something wrong with me. And then I'm going to bring the, the diagnosis from the doctor saying that it's not. And we're going to shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then we're going to lay hands on for healing. So if you need healing or you need God to do something special in your body, I am praying and in his yeah. face all week long for Sunday to be a turning point in your body as it has been a turning point in mine. I just believe we can have what we pray yeah. when we understand who we are and who we're praying to. Yeah. We're not praying amiss. And the Lord birthed this in my spirit. And, and I think I said on, at the end of last year, I told you all, I said that God's going to heal my body. Yeah. And I'm going to have proof. It won't just be a feeling that I say I feel like I'm healed. I think I told you that I was going to bring proof that whatever the doctor said was wrong with me, that the, uh, the doctor was going to verify that it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I was going to have proof, and I told you we're going to have healing ministry. Yeah. And I'm excited about what God's yeah. going to do, and I'm just trying to push your faith over into that zone and in, in, into that dimension with me that you start believing you can have what you pray. So what you're going to do when you get on Periscope is you're going to invite people to watch the broadcast, all right? Then we're going we're gonna to do a quick review, breaking the matrix. You can have what you pray. Matrix is simply, uh, it, its root word meaning means the womb. So Sunday we talked about the importance of the womb because the way God has designed things in the earth realm, everything that comes into the earth has come through the womb. Is that correct? When he first created everything in Genesis, he made it complete and ready to give birth. It was already mature, already ready to reproduce. After that point, it had to come through a womb or a birthing process. So when we, we look at the matrix, we understand the word womb is the place where anything is formed or produced and which gives it shape. So when we, when we understand that, whether it's man or beast, that has a womb is where the seed is placed and there the seed takes on the shape, there the seed gets nurtured, there the seed takes on and makes ready to be birthed or manifested. So Sunday we went into the fact that if we're going to break the matrix, what matrix are we talking about? And we gave you to understand that we're talking about the womb of our minds. 
and how we have taken on seeds of doubt. We've taken on seeds of erroneous beliefs and information. We've taken on strongholds or houses of thought. And they have guided our lives in such a way that they have negated the power of God and our faith in God so that in many areas, not in our whole life, but in, in many areas of our lives, we have a form of godliness, but we deny the power. So while we speak in tongues and while we shake and while we dance, we L-A-C-K the power to overcome things in our lives and we were re remain grossly immature in areas where we should be mature. We remain weak in areas where we should be strong and we, we lack the ability to really trust God in areas where he is relying on us to trust him. So we want to, in this series, work on those areas in our lives as we gain faith by hearing the word of God. Um, First Corinthians, Romans 10 says, faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing how? By, the, by the, the word of God. So I want to put in your hearing the word of God that's going to allow you now to break the matrix in your mind that keeps you from being strong in your faith. Strong in your faith to break out now of patterns and cycles and habits that keep you from having optimal success and performing in optimal power spiritually and grace as God has designed you to do. When we, we see in Exodus 34 where it is first mentioned about the matrix, God had just bought, had brought the children of Israel out of bondage or out of Egypt, which is a typical to the fact that God has brought you out of the bondage of sin. Egypt is a type of bondage to sin. He brought the children of Israel out of sin, and he promised to take them into what? The promised land. He brought them into a land, he said, that was flowing with what? Milk and honey. That they would live in houses that they did not build. They would have cattle that they didn't have to nurse from babies, but they would have herds that were ready to reproduce. They were going to eat from vineyards that they did not plant. But what he did not tell them was that the land he was taking them to was already occupied, and it was occupied by a people who had the intellectual capacity to structure and build all of these things that he was providing for them. Uh, he didn't bother to tell them that not only did they have the intellectual capacity and the prowess to build all of this, they were taller and much larger yes. than they were, yes. and they were men of war. He didn't bother to tell them that, and the reason he didn't warn them was because because he's so very God, he was going to fight for them. Does everybody understand? So there are times when God leaves out information that we think is vital because he already has it covered. Tell somebody God got it covered. So what you fretting over and you think you don't know and you feel he needs to tell you, he's already got it covered. All right. So he takes them into this land called Canaan. So Canaan land, what does that mean to me as a believer? Break it down for me, Pastor. What it means for me as a believer. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you come out of bondage. You come out of sin. You, you come to a place called Canaan when you receive the Holy Ghost. So you receive the spirit, the power of God. The Bible, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Ghost is the power of God. It's not another spirit, but it is very God, the, the God that is the Father in creation, the Son in redemption, the Holy Ghost, the indwelling spirit. Right. One God, Father of us all, not three gods. So when you have the Holy Ghost, you have God. Right. When you have the Holy Ghost, you have Jesus. Yeah. Jesus even taught when he was in the earth that I and my Father will come. Right. And make our abode. And we're going to come and we're going to live in you. And the way we're going to live in you, we're going to be a comforter called the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's going to be my love for you. As God, I can't come because I'm too holy. Mm -hmm. 
as Jesus, I cannot come because I have to give my life as your Redeemer Amen. and go back to the Father. But as the Holy Ghost, I'm sent to dwell right. on the inside of you. Does everybody see it? Yes. So one Lord, one faith, one yes. baptism, one God, one Father of us. Oh, so the Holy Ghost in you is the Spirit of God, the pure love of God. That's why the Scripture says if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, that there's no repentance because you that means you don't even understand who, not what, but who is on the inside of you. So when you have the Holy Ghost, it, it is representative of Canaan land. Say Canaan. Canaan. So in the Holy Ghost, you have possessions. But along with those possessions, there are occupants greater than you. Yeah. <laughs> right in the midst of your blessing. Haven't you experienced that? Yeah. So God says, I I'm getting ready to release da 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 and I'm going to do so and so and so and so. And then you run into all of this warfare and you're wondering what in the world is going on. It is because in Canaan, you cannot carry the wilderness mindset. In the wilderness, you got up and the bread was on the ground. In the wilderness, you went to the rock and you drank water. In the wilderness, you had a pillar of cloud by day to shower you from the sun and a pillar of fire by night to keep you warm. You cannot carry your wilderness mentality into Canaan because if you're going to have milk in Canaan, you're going to have to milk the cow. If you're going to have meat in Canaan, you're going to have to slay and eat. If you're going to eat fruit from the vine, you're going to have to go out and pluck it and pull it. How many understand? Yeah. So it all belongs to you, but it involves you laboring with him that gave it to you. Somebody put a praise on that. Yeah. Say, I will labor. I will labor. Because what did we learn in 1 Corinthians 3 and 9? We are laborers together with, what did you think he meant? He's given you everything, but you must fight. You must work. You get it now. So here you are, you have the Holy Ghost. You are in the midst of your Canaan. And it is occupied by thought lives, perceptions, and strongholds wow. that act like giants <laughs> mm -hmm. and enemies that have had your mind all of the years prior to your being delivered. Yeah. And they are there because they feel like the land of your mind belongs to them. They have responded to situations and circumstances in the way that they have chosen prior to light coming. So they have been able to covertly operate in the darkness of your mind and persuaded you that that's who you were. But you know now because of truth that you were with God before the foundation of the world. And you didn't really know who you were until you were redeemed or purchased and brought back to him so that you could be reunited or reconnected to the real you. Yeah. So you're really just coming into the reality of who you are and learning that all of the other things you have learned is really foreigners or foreign to the reality of who you are in your purpose. Amen. <laughs> because you are greater than what you you have previously believed. Yeah. Even if you have a natural success, even if you have great achievements, that cannot be compared to the greatness that you have in God and walking out your purpose and your destiny in being a son of God in the earth and manifesting his universal and everlasting kingdom. So these strongholds of thought have guided your mind covertly this is how we respond to disappointment. This is how we respond to anger. Wow. This is how we respond to things we don't understand. This is how we respond to things that are uncomfortable. And we have been programmed through our lives until truth comes. That this is just natural for us to feel this way, act this way. This is how we, when people hurt us, or we have a perceived injury, this is where you retreat to and this is how you act. And you will act this way until truth comes because truth demands change. 
And this is where the fight comes in. Yeah. So everywhere that you start feeling uncomfortable now when you hear the truth, it is because truth is attacking. Yeah. One of those enemies, one of those foreigners in the stronghold of your mind and saying, you don't belong up here. Yeah. <laughs> this is not the way we really live. Oh we, we, we don't hold grudges no more. We, we don't hold unforgiveness anymore. We, we, we don't lie anymore. We, we don't steal anymore. How many get it? Yeah. So we have tried to make it be a change in behavior without being a change in heart. You, you, your heart has to take on a change before your life really takes on a change. You, you can alter your behavior for a short time, but if it's not a change in your heart, it, it will not be an entire life change. What do you mean by that? For, for two or three months, I, I can behave like I am eating right. I can behave like I'm eating salads and fruits and, and laying off of the sodas and the, the carbs and the bread and maybe for three months have an appearance that I'm doing better and I'm eating right and, and I'm really on this plan to be healthy. But if that thing has not changed in my heart, I, in my mind, if I haven't destroyed the stronghold of death that has been working because of sin, it won't be but a short time that death will begin to work again and, and I'll have a bag of chips and, and I'll have a box of cookies and, and I'll have a loaf of bread. Why? Because that I made a behavior change, but I didn't make a heart change that said I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Somebody clap your hands for life. See, I'm breaking the matrix of my mind. You got to get this part before I teach you how to ask. Because, see, we have been making um, pseudo behavioral changes without heart change. We've been bringing people in the church and redressing them on the outside and, and giving them a set of rules and regulations that they can check off that they have been doing behaviorally, but they've been struggling internally because they haven't had a heart change. They haven't made up their minds. There, there, there is a, a particular procedure that was really popular going around uh, in society called the lap band. And I said, Lord, you know, I've been, I've been obese all my life. I was an obese child. I weighed, I weighed a bra, wore a bra in the first grade. And if anybody would ever like to experience being, being small, I think I would. I think I might. I, I, I do. And I said, you know, I think I want to get the lap band. I'm, I'm going to look into getting the lap band. And the Holy Ghost said as loud as I'm preaching to you, you don't need a lap band. You need a, a band on your mind. Mm, wow. <laughs> and that drove me to my knees because what he was saying to me is you trying to find a way to get around dealing with your real issue. Yeah. The real issue was what was going on in my mind and my concept of myself and how I really felt about me, not how I dressed. It had, it had nothing to do with how I dressed. So I could get the band and for maybe a year could look like I really changed. But if my mind had not been dealt with, if the matrix wasn't broken, does everybody get it? It wouldn't be but a little while before the band would no longer be effective because the matrix would still be working. Tell somebody, I got to break the matrix. I got to drive the ice. Ice out of my mind so that my real identity can take over. Oh, so the question now becomes, then what's my real identity? My real identity is found in Christ. Amen. So the word of God now, I have to renew my mind about me in the word of God. Yes. My true identity can only come from him because he created me. Amen. He made me and he reserves the right to identify who I am and only him. Amen. 
So you have a stronghold called self-image. And it has dictated to you whether you were good enough, smart enough, uh, whether you thought you were popular, whether people liked you, uh, whether you were known, whether you were left out. It has given you all of this information that has translated in to how you have moved along in relationship, how you have moved along in employment, how you have moved along in, in the secular world and the spiritual world to find yourself many times in cycles of rejection, cycles of, uh, we call it low self-esteem, so that when people will, would even invite you or want you to be involved in things, you would find a way to disqualify yourself right. because the matrix of your self-image yes, yes, was yes. stronger than the truth about who you really were. So in Canaan, say you got to fight. fight. Now here's the issue. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. So I can't fight it uh, just with my mouth. I can't cuss you out and get delivered. (laughs) I can't tell you off and wring my neck and get delivered. I cannot run away either from facing you and be set free. Because the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty now. What makes them mighty is they are through God to the pulling down of the... Does everybody see it? And so where are the strongholds then? The houses of thought in my mind that have literally controlled my outlook on life, has controlled my behavior, controlled my spending habits. So I'm not in debt because I just want to be in debt. I'm in debt because I thought that was the only way I could survive. That was the only way that I could see through my matrix of making it anywhere uh, in life to get anything that I have to do the things that I desire to do. I did not have another reference. Perhaps I came from parents who kept themselves in debt. And I learned that that's the way you make it. It's a matrix. Now, I'm going to go parallel to the movie. How many saw the movie? Yes. Everybody that was quote unquote birth in the matrix was plugged in yes. to a system yes. that made them feel like everything was all right the way that they were mm-hmm. when literally there was a war going on around them <laughs> when you get the holy ghost you don't need a pill yes amen when you get the holy ghost you get unplugged. Yes, yeah. yes. And you start realizing, yeah. oh, <laughs> well, I was. That was not the real world. <laughs> and you hear people say things like, well, I didn't experience this when I wasn't saved. Right, right, right. You ever heard people say that? Right, right, now, right. life for you as a believer is supposed to be better yeah. than yeah. life for you as a sinner. Yeah. Yeah. But when you get unplugged, and you realize you're in the midst of a war that was going on all the time. Yeah. But darkness had blinded you right. to what was really going on. Oh, somebody ought to wake up on this. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now you've got to learn because now you got to assemble. Somebody say, call out. Call out. You got to assemble with the other people that's unplugged. <laughs> and you got to learn the skills and the techniques mm-hmm. of pulling down. <laughs> so you don't pull out. Hey God, you don't pull up. You got to pull down. So you 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 it use a, a different I learned from working out with a personal trainer. I couldn't understand why I had to use my arm so many times. Because I thought maybe one time on the arm machine took care of my whole arm. And you just working me a little too much because I'm not a young chick. But when he it gave me truth, say truth. truth. He says, well, 
when you, when you use this machine, it exercises this part of the arm. Mm -hmm. And when you use this machine, mm -hmm. it exercises this part mm -hmm. of the arm. So each machine was designed mm -hmm. to strengthen or, or build up different parts of the one arm. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So if I'm going to pull down the stronghold, Hey, 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 I feel the Holy Ghost. Then the Holy Ghost works on different parts of my tomb yeah. with different situations. So so he, he might work on relationships for a while and see how I'm going to react when people don't speak and how I'm going to react when they don't talk to me the way I think they ought to talk to me. He's going to try that matrix in my mind. He said, I brought you truth. Now, because in the kingdom, you to love those that mm -hmm. hate you. Yes. You, you to do yes. good to them that despitefully. You see, see everything yes. changes. Yes. True, yes. true changes thing. You talking about you yes. in the kingdom? You better know what you're talking about, yes. huh? Because he said you do good yes. to them yes. that despitefully yes. use you. You you don't take no vengeance. You you that's a different muscle. Yes. You're not you're not using this muscle. No. Yes. <laughs> you're using this. Yes. So the way you deal with your enemy, mm -hmm. you you be you be good to them. Yep. Yes. You heat coals. Yes, that's right. You, that's that's a different pull. That's a different posture. Y'all yeah. y'all getting this? This yes. true. Yes. This true. Yes. So you're not doing this anymore. Mm -mm. You're doing. He said your your weapons pulled down yes. strongholds. In other words, when things come against you, instead of you reaching for people, you're supposed to find what mechanism in your mind yeah. is causing the reaction. Yeah. 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 Am I helping you? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like shouting if I, if I had an organ or a keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. I said something that, that you didn't quite grasp. Mm -hmm. When things happen that are uncomfortable for you, yeah. it is to the extent not that you look at the other person. See, you, you can know, you can check your level of maturity, you can check your, when you're praying, when you're really in the kingdom. Because when you're in the kingdom, you got to do good, not based on what I'm doing out here. Right, yes. You're, so if I do something to you, even if I do it intentionally, yeah. the Holy Ghost is saying to you, before you respond, check what you're about to do as a response. Wow. Identify the mechanism in your own mind. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's And then compare it to this. When you win, you want to be in the kingdom. We're talking to kingdom saints now. This, I know this ain't for babies. This this not nurturing. This this growth. This, this has cereal in the milk. There's some cereal in here. Do you understand? You're gonna have to come on into the truth. Because of where things are. Do you see where we're going in our country? Oh, yeah. Look at this election. And I can't go into that on, on the, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. But just some things prophetically I know is getting ready to happen. And you're going to need to understand you're in Canaan. Yeah. So you're going to have to go ahead and conquer Jericho and move on. Yeah. You can't just keep yeah. going around the wall. Yeah. At some point you're going to have to shout. Yeah. Somebody scream. Yeah. John 15 say, it's 15. If you abide in me, oh, yeah. if I'm not yeah, right, yeah, fine. Yeah, if, John 15, okay. okay. They keep, if I'm off the camera, YouTube, Periscope, I'm a walker. I'm sorry. What does it say? Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Okay, now I'm looking for oh. 
Must be if, if you abide in me. If you if you abide in me. And my word. And my word. Oh, that's what I'm. You. That's seven. Yeah. Yeah. That's seven. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. You should ask what you. Wait, feel. wait now. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if say if. 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 Say that's that's a word of probability. <laughs> that's a word of possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if me this may happen, based on what follows it. Mm -hmm. Is that what if me? Right? If you stand up, you will be taller than you are right now. <laughs> so if, what it say? You abide in me. Oh, if you abide in me. Hmm. Now, abide means abode, live. So if you make your life in me, what else? And my words abide in you. And my words abide in you. Let's work with that a minute. How can I, being in a physical body in the earth, abide in him? Who know? Raise your hand. How can you abide in him? Through the word, because you got to eat and digest the word. Yeah, I can abide in him. By becoming one with his word. How do I become one with the word? How do you become one with anything? I take this woman to be my lawfully wedded wife. I take this man to be my lawfully wedded husband. And these two become one. So what's the C word for that? Covenant. Yes, covenant. So he's saying if you abide in me, in other words, if you will join with me, we'll be one. Right. Did he not teach you when he was on the earth? Mm -hmm. As the Father and I are one. Yeah. I, I, how many is that, John 17? Mm -hmm. As the Father and I are one, yeah. then I and the Father, the Holy Ghost, we are going to be one with you. Mm -hmm. So he says if you'll abide in that truth, that's what he's saying. And let my word abide in you. Now, was he talking about just this? No. 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 So, just put your finger in there and go over to St. John chapter 1. Don't lose that page because I want to finish. Because we're talking about having what you pray. Let me tell you. See, you need to know why it works. I like to teach mechanics. So you can't misunderstand. You have to misunderstand to misunderstand. John 1 says... In the beginning. In the beginning was the word. So in the beginning was the what? Word. Word. And what? And the word was with God. Oh, so the word was with God in the beginning. And what else? And the word was God. Oh, wait now. The word was not only with him, but the word was him. And what else? The same was in the beginning. Oh, they were the same in the beginning. So God and his word is the same. And what else? And all things were made by him. All things were made by the word. Which was with God. Which was God in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And without him was not anything oh. made that was made. And it wasn't anything made without him. So nothing exists without him. Nothing. Everything that was made Woo. came out of God. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh. Say, I, I came, out came out of God. Of God. I could not exist I if I didn't come out of God. So I don't have any problems. Abide. Abide. No. In him, because I came out of him. My very substance is of him. Uh -huh. What did he say? In him was life. Oh. Uh huh. And the life was the light of men. Now, watch. In him was L I F E, right? So the quality of his life is Zoe, the quality of our life is Bios, right? Different qualities of life. But all life was in him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and his life, his life, gives 
light, illumination, freedom, revelation, knowledge. How many see it? Right? And it's the light. Who 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 you give light to? To men. Oh. So your now here's a prayer point. When you're praying, you pray. I am not in darkness about the things that I am going through. Because the word that is in me, where is the word? In me. Gives me, yes. And light is understanding, revelation, illumination, information. What does light do? It dispels, light shines into darkness. And darkness comprehends it not. Now these lights are on in this room. Where is the darkness? The darkness is in this room, but it cannot overtake. Hey, go shout The Naman say, hey, Holy Ghost, cannot overtake the light that's in this room. So darkness exists, yes, but it can't comprehend or overtake the light when it's present. So my prayer is I thank you, God. That light is ever present within me. Light is in my understanding. Light is in my mind. See, this changes the way you pray from begging to understanding who you are because of the word that's on the inside of you. That's why I am confident and I'm not afraid to teach you that you can have what you pray because when you pray according to his will, he watches over his word to hasten to perform it. So when you give him his word, that's a done deal. Amen. And I'm going to show you how it works. Yes. Lord, I love you for it. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, well, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say about this word in John 1? What do you say? The light of all men. And what else? And the light shining in darkness. Uh huh. And the darkness comprehended not. There, there was a man sent from God. Skip down where it say what happened. The light took on what? And. The light became flesh. Come on. And the same for a witness to bear witness to. Okay, I'm sorry. And he was not the. That that was a true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the How world. How many men does he light? Every, 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 every man. Okay, then why do we have sinners? Don't have truth. The light hasn't shown where. Okay, so what's your assignment? Let your you get it? Do you see it? So what we have sinners because there's an absence of light. Now you say, well, we go out witnessing, we pass out changes and that. But if the light that's in you is darkness, yes. so what are you shining? Becomes the question. When we have more churches now than we've ever had, and we have more tracks and more ways to disseminate it, it's not the gospel message that's the problem. Is the light in you light? Yes. That's right, yes. Or is the light in you darkness? Yes. And then the Bible says, how great then, if what's supposed to be light in you yes. is darkness. Yes. Hey. So, you, you, do you understand the question? He's saying, if you say you are the light of the world, but you are not emitting any rays, then if these bulbs, if this switch was turned off, what would fill this room? So are you cut off? Are you cut off? Do you have a form? You look like church people. You go to church like church people, but you have lost your zeal for prayer. You have lost your zeal for the study of the word of God. Your zeal has been hijacked by a lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Are you cut off? Because your matrix isn't broken. And the light that's in you is darkness. Because before it can get out, it's filtered by so many other things to not even a flick of the bit can get past. 
This message is after something. Mm -hmm. I know God downloaded this to me. Amen. Because there's got to rise up for people mm -hmm. that do know their God and are strong. Mm -hmm. Hey. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. That's going forth that are mighty and who are going to do great exploits. What do you mean? That means God wants to put such an anointing on you that when you open your mouth, the word leaps out of you into people. Yes, Lord. And, and you're not running after them, but they say, hey, wait a minute, lady. What must I do? Hey, shut up. What must I do? What do I need to do? I'm tired of being like this, and I haven't met nobody that had the real goods. I, I met people with a lot of talk. I met people with a lot of fluff, but I haven't met nobody that they left a presence and that, that, that I could feel something. Be safe. Somebody clap your hands and say, Make me a brighter light. They say, in the, And he became flesh and he dwelt among us. I don't know what verse it is, but I know it's in there. 14. And he dwelt among us. And the word was made flesh and uh -huh. he dwelt among us. So this word took on flesh, and what do we call him when he took on flesh? Jesus. We called him Jesus, and you know the rest of the story how he redeemed us, right? right. Now go back to, to John 15 and 7 where I had you. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, then what happens? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Mm -hmm. Now here, here is a condition. Say, this is a condition. This is a condition. And this is a prayer point. This is a prayer point. All right? So, Father... I, I, I am asking you before I ask you for anything. You get it? Now that I understand who the word is. God, not what the word is. Who the word is. I'm asking you, teach me how to abide in you and how to allow your word to abide in me. I do not assume that I know because I've been going to church. Right. Right. I want my relationship with you to be so intimate that you are leading and guiding me through the Holy Ghost. How to pray. You hear the difference? Because the same word that was with you, that was what that was you in the beginning, abides in me in the Holy Ghost. Make me skillful. You want to write that sentence down. Mm -hmm. Teach me how to have good command of the word of God that's entrusted to me. So this these are not made up prayers. When people hear me pray, they say, Will you? Hey, how you? I don't know. I look in the word and I see a key. And I add that to my prayer life. Yes, yes, that's it. I want to be skillful. Yes. Just like you want to be a skilled typist or skilled IT or, or whatever. I want to be skillful with God that he can download something to me. Yes. And just like he did with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus would go in prayer, mm -hmm. being the word himself in flesh. Mm -hmm. Come out of prayer and say, now, don't expect nothing from me. But what I see my father do. Right. That's right. So what's my goal? I want to see what the father is doing. You hear the prayer. Lord, show me what you're doing. Yeah. You, you, you hear the difference. Mm -hmm. So now when you read your Bible, it takes on a new meaning. You, you're, you're being programmed in truth. You're, you're not just reading a story. You're, you're getting in it and you're saying, Put your word in me. David said, write it on the tables of my heart. He, he didn't have the Holy Ghost. He was just a prophetic king priest. Yeah. And he said, I understand this thing is so powerful. I don't have 66 books, but I hear you speaking to me, and I don't want to lose what you're saying, so write it on the table of my heart. Here you have recorded words. Plus, you got the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. so he's speaking on the inside of you. Right. Lord, make me sensitive to your voice. Yes, yes. You got it? Mm -hmm. Desensitize me mm -hmm. to my soul's voice, mm -hmm. of my own voice, right. the voice of the enemy that speaks through the matrices in my mind that are not broken. 
Because God will tell you something, and if you've got a matrix of doubt, it will talk you out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. It will. Yeah. And if you don't have enough word in you to put it down, mm -hmm. you'll be stuck yeah. in that place mm -hmm. until that word come around again. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's true. Mm -hmm. So he said, but, but here's the condition. Abide in me. My word abide in you. Right. Now, he says you can ask. What do you say you can ask? What you will. Okay, so if I'm going to pray and have what I pray, then my will has to be brought into alignment. Say alignment. Write down alignment. Okay. I bought brand new tires for my car. I think it was, I think, when my last birthday, put because I wanted Michelin tires. Nothing wrong with the rest of the tires. I just happen like Michelin tires. And uh, when I sit to get the tires put on, an elder that y'all know made me get insurance. And I had never done that before. You know, I just bought tires. And even though the tires were brand New, somebody say brand new. Brand new. new. Right? They still had to be, watch this, they were brand new, but they had to be balanced and aligned. Yes, that's right. They had never been driven. I'm, how many hearing what I'm saying in the natural? They were brand new. They've never been driven, but they had to be balanced and aligned before they would give me the insurance. Hey, Shabbat. For those. Get the insurance. That's true. Get the insurance. Yes, Lord. 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 Brand new you. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. Yes, yes, wow, yes. Mm. Upon receiving him, mm -hmm. he brings you into balance. Yes. <laughs> yes. Then he has to align you with his will. Yes. Yes. So that he can give you not just insurance, but blessing and God. Jesus is my Oh, what a foretaste of glory. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not just I'm not waiting to die to taste or get this glory. I, when I receive the Holy Ghost, I get a foretaste of glory. Divine. Somebody asked you what it feels like to get the Holy Ghost. What is life? You can't tell them. You just have to say, heaven came down and, and glory. Well, what does glory feel like? I don't know. Ah, but I can help you experience. See, you, you, you can't just intellectually know God. He has to be experienced. And he's saying uh, that you can ask what you will because the Holy Ghost in you is going to Bring you into alignment. Mm -hmm. Now, now watch this. Would you go to? Uh, uh, bring it back to my Holy Ghost. Sometimes he be downloading me, and I'm trying to talk to you, and I'm trying to listen. Mm -hmm. That he's he's already blessed you uh, with all spiritual everything that pertains to life and godliness. Is that Peter? Uh, where's that? that uh, pertain to life and godliness. He didn't tell me where it was. He just said it. Is it? But he's already now. In with when now this 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 would make him so very God and not anything else. When you were with him before the foundation of the world, and he chose you and you chose him back, mm -hmm. he made you a complete package. Yeah. And. Where is it? Second Peter, one and three. I, I, it sounded like Peter. 
And we're going to read it. Soon we might read again. He saw God. Well, Nick, he made you a complete package. Everything that you would need to fulfill his will. Including a destiny that you will be a son of God and have a full inheritance and return back to him. Nothing missing, nothing broken. He was, he's so God. He was not intimidated by the fact that you had to pass through the flesh, be born in sin, say shapen. So the matrix that you came through in the flesh was iniquity. Right. Everybody see it? Born in sin, say shapen. And what happens in the womb? You take shapen. Shapen any new. He, was he wasn't intimidated by the bloodline that he sent you through. Wow. He wasn't intimidated by the generational curses or blessings. None of that mattered to him. Because what he had sealed in you was so very him that it could stand up under everything that it had to be subjected to. <laughs> and you say, you can't prove that. Yes, I can, because you're sitting here. No, you're sitting here. You live in proof that he's mightier than all. <laughs> you're a prepackaged. And he had a designated time when you would hear that which was familiar to your spirit. You could have been in the bar room, on the dance floor, under somebody you didn't know. You could have been anywhere. And when you heard that voice, your spirit said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. After that, somebody invited you to church or, or you found your way to church. Or, your parents could have been taking you to church from a baby like that, and you didn't hear nothing. Mm -hmm. Grew up, started partying, doing your own thing, but one day, mm -hmm. at that appointed time, say time, time. you heard that voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you came to church, and it wasn't like no other time mm -hmm. you came. You. Yeah. Does everybody hear me? Okay, yeah. so he's saying, your complete package, what he saying, Second Peter? According to as his divine power, <laughs> have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Life, life, bios, as we live in the earth. And what? Godliness, which pertains to our spiritual life after his design. Does everybody understand it? Okay, and what else? Through the knowledge of him. Now, here's how you get it. <laughs> Through what? Come on. <laughs> uh, okay, you get it. But read, I need you to read it and get it. <laughs> Through the knowledge of him that have called us to the glory and virtue. So we get it through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Okay, who is him? Jesus. Go back to John 1. <laughs> no, don't just say Jesus. The word. The word. Because see, Jesus, Jesus was the son of God, a man that came to redeem us. Uh -huh. But the word called you. Hey, yeah. 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 Yes, yes. You understand now? Yes. It was the word that sent Jesus. Yes, yes. that's right. Yeah. It was the word that was Jesus. Yeah. That was with God in the beginning. The, yes. the, y'all seeing it now? Jesus is our redeemer. He's the son of God. The son of man. The redeemer that died. Jesus took on the body so he could die. Right. But the word in him was eternal. Yes. Hey yes. God. Yes. That lived through death. Yes. Yes. And got up. Yes. Yes. And declared all power. Yes. So through what? Through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him now. Not just your redemption. See we stop at the redemption. But when you have the knowledge that he was with God and was God 
and all powerful and that everything came out of him including you and everything going back into him that changes your whole perspective that he brought you now into the Holy Ghost you look in the Canaan when you read if you ever read the Old Testament some new saints don't ever read the Old Testament and you understand the battles that they ensued but every time they came out taking the land the only time they wouldn't take the land is if sin was in the camp yeah, right. that's true and some of the battles, he told them, don't even worry about taking up your arms. I got this. That's what that's the knowledge you need. Because through that knowledge, now, now you understand, we going, we're going way, we're going through the cross. <sighs> Is that that's too much? Y'all understand it? Yes. Praise God. Yes, Jesus. We are the redeemed of the Lord and we say what? So, so we say we are the redeemed. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My inheritance because of that blood, however, is eternal because I came from eternity. Right. Wow. I passed through time for a purpose. And when that purpose is finished, I'm going back to my future. Right. Right. So my knowledge needs to understand who I am. When I understand the power that's working in me, I am no longer intimidated by a circumstance right. or a diagnosis right. or a threat. Hey, hey, yeah. When I limit myself just to the fact that I was a sinner and I'm born again, then I'm putting myself in a in a dimension, a time capsule. But when I understand that 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 my life, I'm dead and my life is hid in God with Christ. And because he lives, I live also. What can separate me? You, so what, what, what am I doing when I talk like that? I'm pulling the mucus plug right. out of the matrix of religion and things that have shaped me to be fearful and doubtful and, and to be afraid and not confident of who I am in God. I didn't say cocky, but confident to know that he loves me and he's not going to change his mind and that I'm saved and I know that I'm saved and I don't have to walk around wondering if I'm saved and if I'm going to be saved tomorrow. I am saved by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I am redeemed and every day I will walk in his word and he has promised to keep me. He's engraved me in the palm of his hand. Do you understand? He's given me power over all the power of the enemy through the knowledge of him that, that, that brings divine glory. I understand some things. You get, so I don't just lay down because the enemy say boo. I don't just lay down because he's taller than me. These giants will fall. Maybe not because I can pull them down, but greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I believe it and I receive it and I accept it because I have the knowledge that God is greater than all. He is mightier than all. And he has chosen to live on the inside of me. And there's nothing that can stop him. There's nothing mightier than my God. Great and mighty is our God. He's a God almighty that reigns forever. And he is for me. And if he is for me, he is more than the world against me. I believe it. I receive it. Somebody get up and put a praise on it. And say, that's my testimony. I'm not in this for myself. I'm not back, it's not up against the wall uh, Unless it's the wall of God uh, I lay in his mercy I lay in his love uh, There's innumerable hosts of angels uh, That are waiting for God To give them charge to fight for me You gotta know it, you can't just say it Something in you and your prayer life has to turn over When you are praying that cramp hold And say, I know this I know this. I know this. Just like you know, four times four is sixteen. Oh, just like you learn your timetables. They don't have to learn them no more. But when we were little, we had to know them all the way, the ones to the twelves. And you could. 
on them times I was mad. Cause I had to spend the extra money. I saved just enough to get the tires. I don't know if you understand. Yeah. Then, but somebody younger than me, shorter than me, help me. You understand? Get it for me. I had to spend more money, but I had to tell him thank you. Cause I had a little old piece of something. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. I thought they could fix. Uh -huh. They said, no, ma'am. You got to have a new title. Oh, uh -huh. Thank God. See, and I had inch, inch by my life. Right. And sometimes when you're walking through life. Uh -huh. Oh, God, I feel like preaching. I need a revival. I just need to go to it. And some stuff hits you. And you can't. You ain't no cash. You, 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 you need a new part of your soul. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and when you got assurance, mm -hmm. yes. he don't even patch that up. <laughs> he just cut that out yeah. and put a new piece in. Y'all know yeah. God's still making babies, right? Yeah. Did y'all know God's still making babies? That means he got some more arms and eyes and fingers and toes. And it. I see y'all don't believe like that. But I'm waiting for the day we sitting in service and somebody's legs shoot out. Yes, and they yes, jump up. I do that shit. Yes, sir. And say, well, my leg just grew out. My leg just grew out. I'm waiting on the day when somebody I pop in the socket that didn't have it. I want to see. I want to see. God, boy, I, I don't know what y'all want, but I want to see God be God in this earth. I want to see the God of the Bible manifest himself to this generation so they don't think we just a bunch of crazy folk talking in tongues. God is real. And I want him to be real in you. Join us again Sunday, 11.30 a.m. next Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m. We love you. I am Dr. Diane Clark, and I am empowering the harvest. Oh, somebody praise him. Don't y'all sit down on that word. Somebody, somebody, please. My God, tell three people I'm going to have what I pray. I'm going to have what I pray. I'm going to have mercy. My prayer life changing.